everybody. Before this chapter, you have been introduced by the subtopic regarding two types of progressive wave, which is transverse wave and longitudinal wave. So today, I will explain to you about the superposition of the wave and the intensity of the wave. Before I go more further, let us look at the learning outcome by the end of this chapter. You should be able to state the principle of superposition of wave for the constructive and destructive interference and discuss progressive and standing wave. Now, you can see this animation that when two waves move opposite direction and overlap at this point. What will happen when two waves meet each other? You can know this answer by the end of this lecture. Superposition of the wave According to the principle of superposition, said that when two or more th waves are travelling in the same region, the resultant displacement at any point is better sum of their individual displacement at that point. Wave that overlap can create a pattern of constructive interference or destructive interference. Look this diagram. There are two waves. The first wave moves to the right and the another wave move to the left. These conditions are two waves at zero second. At 0 0.1 second, the two waves move and getting closer. They have not they have not met each other and no superposition yet. Let's see. The amplitude of first wave is two centimeters and the amplitude of second wave is one centimeter. At 0 0.2 second, two wave meet and this point at this point and superposition occur. According to the principle of superposition, the amplitude of resultant wave is equal to the sum of two wave. We know first amplitude is 2 cm and second amplitude is 1 cm. So vector sum will become 3 cm. Wave that add to give large amplitude show the constructive interference. After superposition, these two waves separate again. 1 cm move to the left and 2 cm move to the right. Now, let's see the another example. When time is 0 second and there are two waves, the first wave, amplitude is 1 cm, and the second wave is the cross, displacement is negative 1 cm. At 0 0.1 second, during superposition, the amplitude of the wave is equal to vector sum of the two waves, which is 1 cm plus negative 1 cm. So we get the 0 cm. Wave that add to give a smaller amplitude or show the disruptive interference. When time 0 0.2 second, the two waves move separately. The thrust move to the left and the crest move to the right. This is show, these two examples show what will happen when two waves meet and according to the principle of superposition, the amplitude of resultant wave is equal to the vector sum of this displacement of two individual waves before and after they meet. Next slide. Constructive interference. Constructive interference occur when Y1 and Y2 have the same wavelength, frequency and in phase each other. The resultant displacement is greater than the displacement of the individual wave. When two waves meet each other, 
the resultant displacement is greater than the displacement of individual. You can see it here. Before this, the amplitude of first wave is one centimeter, and after together, the displacement become two centimeter. Next slide: disruptive interference. Disruptive interference occur when y1 and y2 have the same wavelength, frequency, and antiphase each others. Antiphase each others. The resultant displacement is less than the displacement of the individual wave or equal to zero. First wave start from the crest and second wave start from the throat. This is we call antiphase. Standing wave. The formation of standing wave are produced by the superposition of the progressive wave of equal in amplitude and frequency traveling in the opposite direction. This is equation to progressive wave. Y1 is equal to A sine omega t plus kx. Positive sign show the wave propagate to the left. Y2 is equal to A sine omega t minus kx. Negative sign show the wave propagate to the right. Please refer to this diagram. First graph show the wave propagate to the right. The equation will be y1 is equal to a sine omega t minus kx. Second graph show the wave propagate to the left. The equation will be y2 is equal to a sine omega t plus kx. When two progressive waves meet together, it will become stationary wave. The equation is y is equal to y1 plus y2. y is equal to a cos kx sine omega t. This equation you can learn in tutorial class how to get this equation. A represent to two amplitude from the progressive wave. Let's look at the next slide. This graph shows the formation of stationary wave. What you can see here, zero displacement. Not so not is a zero displacement. Maximum displacement we call anti knot. Maximum displacement we call anti knot. Distance between two consecutive knot and on anti knot to anti knot. is lambda over 2. Distance between conservative nodes and anti node. Node to anti node. Is lambda over 4. Lambda is 2 times distance between consecutive Nodes and anti nodes. You can see at this diagram nodes until nodes. This is lambda. Progressive wave. Look at the animation and this picture. When a wave starts from a point in a medium and propagate in all directions and never return, it's called progressive wave. It's produced by a source of disturbance in a medium travel onward. All particles vibrate with the same amplitude, but the phase change continuously. Progressive wave transfer energy from one place to another without transferring the matter. In progressive wave, 
no particle is permanently at rest, always vibrate, stationary wave. Look at this animation and this picture. Standing wave, also called stationary wave, combination of two waves moving with the same speed in opposite direction, is having the same amplitude and frequency. In stationary wave, the amplitude of the different particles are different. They range from zero at the node to maximum at the anti node. Zero at the node and maximum at anti node. In a stationary wave, the particle at the nodes are permanently at rest. Stationary waves do not transfer energy from one place to another place. Okay guys, look at the next subtopic, sound intensity. At the end of this chapter, you should be able to define sound intensity and discuss the dependence of intensity on amplitude and distance from the point source. Define sound intensity. Sound intensity is defined as the sound power per unit area. It will be intensity is equal to power over area. The unit of intensity is watt per meter square. Intensity will become energy per time times area. This is power. Energy per time is power. Also, we can define the intensity is the rate of sound energy flow across unit area perpendicular to the direction of the sound propagation. Derivation of sound intensity. Do you know sound wave flow out from the source in all direction? For example, when I'm singing everybody in front of me, from the left, from the right, and also behind me can hear. This is because sound wave flow away from the source in three dimensions like the spherical wave. If the sound coverage area is a sphere, intensity is equal to power over 4 pi r squared. Power from the source constant where area A is equal to 4 pi r squared. Factor the influence sound intensity. Look at this picture. Greater amplitude wave have more energy and greater intensity, so the sound louder. You can see, highest or greater amplitude is highest intensity, and lower amplitude is a low intensity sound. For example, when you turn down the volume of the radio, you reduce the energy carry by the sound wave. So, you also reduce the intensity. Look at the relationship between intensity and amplitude. Intensity directly proportional to the amplitude square. So, highest intensity, bigger amplitude. The graph show intensity against amplitude square. Highest intensity and amplitude is greater. Last slide. Factors that influence sound intensity. This diagram shows the relation between intensity, I, and the distance of the source from the observer, R. This is our source. This is observer first observer. This is second observer. 
when the source moves towards the observer, R is decreasing, but intensity will increase, so the loudness is increased. When the source moves away from the observer, R is increased, but intensity will decrease, so the loudness is decreased. This is because intensity is directly inversely with the R squared. So, this is a graph intensity against I over R squared. Okay guys, that's all for today. After this, you can discuss more details with your tutorial lecturer. Thank you.